Hi, people. Y'all can't see me very good. Maybe I should take my glasses off for a minute. Ow. <laughs> I'm going to read, though, so I'm going to have to put them back on. I was trying to figure out how to keep the glare out, but, you know, if I talk, then you don't see a glare. Unless you can see that sparkle in my eye, which, you know, that happens, too, because the light's reflecting. <laughs> I have a sparkle. Sometimes it's from me, but I think sometimes it's just the light shining in my eyes. So I'm going to go ahead and read um, Ether chapter 13. However, now I'm sitting here sweating. I know that's not a really nice thing to be talking about. I ought to go open that window. It is hot. I am hot. That's the problem is I ran out of my Gabby Panton, and that's what controls the sweats. And here I sit. Hot, hot, hot. So what should I do? Take off my sweatshirt. I think that's what I'll do. You guys just hang tight, okay? It's not always the easiest thing for me to do. But I do have a shirt on under there. Right? <laughs> yes, I do. All right, hang tight. I'm just going to take this outer thing off. That is what they say about menopause. One of the things they say. <laughs> Who are they? I don't know. Somebody said it. Okay, let's see if my hair managed to get back where it belonged. Oh. They said they said something, but oh, that's what it was. If you are how to dress for menopause, you just wear layers, okay? And that way you can take them on. You can be prepared to rip your clothes off, but you have something else on underneath. I gotta quit rocking. Especially see, I got a glider to rock in now. So, um, I just want to get ether over with. I know bad things are coming, so I'm not looking forward to that. We have three chapters left to go through. And I know that there, um, I don't know, so we'll just look at it together, um, but I'm pretty sure it's going to tell of their destruction, but I've never read it, okay, so we're reading it together, it's just I've read something similar over there in Mormon and in Moroni, and I really didn't like it, but it is important to know what went on here because history does repeat itself if you're not careful. And even if you are careful, there's not much you can do about everybody else. You know, the, the, best, the best way is to spread the love actually really love your brother and sister and try not to hurt them because that's what's wrong with this world it's all the hate and then there's the evil one satan lucifer our sly cunning brother i wrote that in a paper one of those papers in my book um i really wish i had some company i'd like to go I'd like to go to Kansas, Kansas, Kansas. Who did that? It was, oh, I know who did that. <laughs> what was his name? Frank Zappa. Frank Zappa did a song that had what I just sang in it. Weird. Way back when I was um, 16. 15 or 16, we took a trip back to the East Coast and, you know, to my family and then um, a couple of Kevin's sisters went with us. And we, um, we went and stopped at a lot of different places, but one place was my sister's, uh, not my sister's, my mother's sister, Aunt Margie. 
We stopped at her house and stayed for probably just a night. I don't know. All I know is I was introduced to Frank Zappa at that house. <laughs> that was a trip. Met my cousins. I had a couple of cousins there. Okay. Nevertheless, I never took the ivermectin. I need to take the ivermectin. And I got a doctor's appointment tomorrow. I'm not real excited to go to that because um, I was borderline. These people over here will accept you up to 200 blood sugar. I was 187, but by the time I got there, I was <clears throat> 206 or something. A lot of tension and, you know, driving where I don't know where I'm at. And nervousness can make your blood sugar go up. All kinds of things can make your blood sugar go up. So... But they, they got it down to 196, but that was not very low. Because across the state over in Kennewick, they won't do your blood sugar unless you're down to 150. You know, below 150. So I worry about that. I'm kind of worried about it anyway. But I do need to just keep the faith. And, and even if they tell me something bad, I'm going to go with how I feel. I am feeling some, some something. I'm feeling a few things, okay? Like my left arm. Not always. It's doing good today, but my left arm up in here in my veins and stuff, um, I could feel some type of something in there. You know, where there'd be a little bit of pain. I, I don't know how to describe it, and it's not there right now. But my blood pressure, last time I went to the doctor, was just crazy, okay? It was like 190 over 80 and it had been being really good I mean 138 over I think 70 I don't know 68 I don't know blood pressure stuff but I knew, I knew that 190 over 80 was not good <laughs> and it weren't they got it down a little bit but I think it was the instrument they were using they put it way down in here and it cut off my you know where that big fat vein is? It kept that off and got really super tight and then it went really even tighter. Anyway, sometimes their instruments are bad. Okay. But my blood pressure was up both days. And now tomorrow I'm going to drive my car. When I haven't used uh, maps on my car... I sure hope it's all set up. I didn't go out there and try it out. You know, if I'd start the car, then I need to go and drive it for 20 minutes. And that's what I did the other day. I think it's going to be fine. I think it just, the alternator drained it. And so once it's been charged back up, it shouldn't have a reason to drain. You know, unless something's left on inside. And here I am rocking. I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me just get myself up here. I want to read that. And hopefully it'll be okay. But now we've got to actually ether. You know, the book is called Ether, but we hadn't been reading about ether. And here he's going to talk about New Jerusalem, so that ought to be cool. I mean, I have questions about the New Jerusalem. You know, because this is going to be right, either right before the millennium hits, or it's got to be. All I know is... Um, there's a lot of controversy about these uh, 144,000. Okay, that's 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes. And they're going to march back, as far as I know, okay? I had heard they were going to march across America because there won't be any cars and roads and stuff. And they're going to build New Jerusalem at Jackson County. Now, I'm not sure if it's Jackson County or if it's up a road a piece, but that's where the gate to the Garden of Eden is. What do they call that? Adam Omdi Amen. Adam Omdi Amen. And I almost wonder if that's not the brother of Jared's name. 
Now see, they couldn't pronounce his name, so they just always called him the brother of Jared. And Adam on thy almond is not the easiest thing to pronounce. You have to think about it. But anyway, I believe that is, you know, probably 20, 30, 40 miles away from Jackson County, somewhere up north of Jackson County. The New Jerusalem. Because when the millennium starts, there's going to be, I thought there was going to be three of them, but I guess maybe there's only going to be two. Probably one over there and one over here. But here's the thing. I just realized that, you know, when Jesus comes again, I mean, if this is not after he comes, if he comes again, when, okay, when he comes again, the earth is going to go through a major change, okay? All the land is going to go into one place. So I started to say, New Jerusalem over there, New Jerusalem, you know, the Jerusalem over there and Jerusalem over here, but it's going to be all on the same land mass. There'll be sea, ocean, whatever. There'll be water on one side and earth on the other. And it'll be flat. There'll be no mountains. I mean, I read it in the scriptures. Okay, where at, I don't know at the moment. <laughs> but maybe it's in um, Doctrine and Covenants because that's those are the revelations that went along with organizing the church. Told them what to do. Revelations given to the prophet Joseph Smith. Anyway, pretty neato stuff, people. Sometimes things are not easy to get through when you're reading it, but, you know, just make it a note in your head that it's important that you read it. And then back, go back later. And when you go back later, you'll get more out of it. You know, you don't always understand what you're reading. I do know I, take, I need to take that ivermectin, and I need to get some more. What I need to do is try to get those pills first. I'll be taking those every day. I gotta quit crossing my legs. See, that's another thing. You cross your legs, you cut off your blood your blood supply. You cut off the blood circulation when you cross your legs. When you cross your arms or you know, hold on to something tight. Don't have it constrict you. Really wish I would have found that ring. I saw the pictures of my rings today. I lost Joe's ring, but he never wore it anyway. So it was my ring. <laughs> but when I quit wearing my rings, then I quit wearing that ring too. But I have been thinking, I've been thinking I should just go ahead and size my rings and wear them. I know I've said it already, but I hate seeing all that money just sit in the drawer. And a ring is a ring is a ring. It's a symbol, right? Nevertheless, I do need to put it on the market for sale. When I saw a ring like mine, and I didn't see it there today, but I saw a ring similar to mine. I think mine's prettier. And her diamond, if she was talking about the middle diamond, the solitaire, then her diamond was bigger than mine. But if she was talking about the whole thing and how much diamond carat weight there is put together, then mine is bigger than hers. <laughs> but the point I'm saying is she wanted 5,000, 5,350 or 550 or something like that for her ring. And so I'm thinking, okay, I wonder if she sold it. My rings are beautiful. And they're all clean, shiny, sparkly. And I was told by a jeweler that it's very high quality diamond. Very, uh, a lot of clarity. I mean, high quality. Because all diamonds have flaws in them. But this one didn't have very much. So I need to go and do that again. I need to find a jewelry store around here and go see if I can't get some information. 
I believe the ring is probably a size eight because I think my finger is a size eight and a half and it's just not big enough. Just not quite big enough. <clears throat> but they are beautiful. And I like yellow gold, so. I mean, how can you tell the difference between white gold and sterling silver? It's so for sterling silver tarnishes. Okay, anyway, I was going to read. <laughs> so quit rocking. I'm going to read uh, Ether chapter 13. And we're just at 6 minutes and 39 seconds, so that's not so bad. I just, I don't want that temple acting like it's part of my hair up here. <laughs> where those uh, steeple things are was right where my hair was. It made me look like I had my hair standing up. So I moved it. <clears throat> so anyway, here we go. This is Ether, chapter 13. Oh, I really think I should be closer. I'll bring this over here. Okay. Ether speaks of new... <clears throat> Ether speaks of a new Jerusalem to be built in America by the seed of Joseph. He prophesies, is cast out, writes the Jaredite history, <clears throat> and foretells the destruction of the Jaredites. War rages over all the land. Chapter, I mean, verse 1. <clears throat> this is chapter 13. And now I, Moroni, proceed to finish my record concerning the destruction of the people of whom I have been writing. For behold, they rejected all the words of Ether, for he truly told them of all things from the beginning of man and that after the waters had receded from off the face of the land, <clears throat> it became a choice land above all other <clears throat> above all other lands, a chosen land of the Lord. Wherefore the Lord would have that all men should serve him who dwell upon the face thereof. <clears throat> Sorry. And that it was the place of the new Jerusalem, which should come down out of heaven, and the holy sanctuary of the Lord. <clears throat> Boy, I'm dried up here. Okay, so did you guys grasp onto that? <clears throat> I've been kind of telling you about the ether, I mean, the book of ether. And Jesus did tell them <clears throat> when he kept them, their languages together, and he led them out of the land through the wilderness over to the place and they built the barges and he helped them light the ships. Anyway, what was the point of that? But he did say, he told them, <clears throat> they had to worship him. They had to serve the Lord of the land, and that's him. Okay? So, and that it was the place of the new Jerusalem, which should come down out of heaven, and the holy sanctuary of the Lord. Behold, Ether saw the days of Christ, and he spake concerning a new Jerusalem upon this land. <clears throat> and he spake also concerning the house of Israel and the Jerusalem from whence Lehi should come. <clears throat> After it should be destroyed, it should be built up again, a holy city unto the Lord. Wherefore, it could not be a new Jerusalem. For it had been in a time of old, <clears throat> but it should be built up again and become a holy city of the Lord, and it should be built unto the house of Israel. <clears throat> and 
that a new Jerusalem should be built up upon this land unto the remnant of the seed of Joseph, <coughs> for which things there has been a type, for which things have been a type. Huh. For as Joseph brought his father down into the land of Egypt, even so he di died there. Wherefore the Lord brought a remnant of the seed of Joseph out of the land of Jerusalem, that he might be merciful unto the seed of Joseph, that they should perish not, even as he was merciful unto the father of Joseph, that he should perish not. He's talking about Joseph and Egypt and the twelve tribes of Israel and the brothers of Joseph. They sold him into slavery out of jealousy because Abraham loved him so. There's a big old long story that goes with that too. Abraham, it's got to be the story because here it is coming to my head. Maybe I better not say. And there was <clears throat> there was somebody that loved somebody so and wanted to marry him, and and the father tricked him and he had to work for him so many years in order to get her hand in marriage. And then he said, "No, you have to marry the older one. You can't have her." And he was working for her. So then he had to work another seven years. It seems like that's the story. And I don't know if that's Abraham. But the point was, he had... See, I'm telling it wrong, I'm sure. He had children from another because the one he loved could never get pregnant. And then finally she did. And so I, I'm believing Joseph and his younger brother were born of her. And were more special to him because he loved her so much. And maybe it wasn't the one where he worked for seven years and another seven years, but still, maybe he wanted her, married her, and she couldn't have children. So she, um, after so long of not having children, I believe she gave him one of the servants so that he could have children. And then in the end, she was able to have, I'm sure she had two. I, I, I don't know. I get confused with that story. But anyway, I know that <clears throat> Joseph, his brothers sold him into slavery. But then by being sold into slavery, he went and um, was in prison. It was a different type of deal. And he ended up working for the Pharaoh. I don't know, I don't know if it was a Pharaoh. But he ended, I think it was. He ended up working for whoever was in charge. <clears throat> and... Um, told him about his dreams, I believe, unless that was somebody else. <laughs> that happens too. Um, but the point is, he ended up saving the whole nation by um, interpreting dreams that had to do with um, feast and famine. I got a hair on my nose there. Something to do with seven lean cows and seven fat cows, and the seven lean cows ate the seven fat cows. Anyway, um, the interpretation of all that stuff was that we save the grain. We do the food storage thing. We don't, you know, just be slothful about it, but we save it and we store it and so that when the seven years of famine comes, we have food, okay? And he, and he dispersed food. And then probably opening up the see I've got so many things in my head I'm not sure but it was like the grain was being kept and nobody could use it you know like in the Ten Commandments Moses opened up those grain doors and everybody got to eat instead of starving to death you know here they are expecting all these slaves to do all this heavy work but not feed them how can you do that you have to have strength so anyway, I think it might have been a similar thing, but I know it was saving the grain so they had something to eat. And then his brothers who sold him into slavery ended up coming to him for food because he was put in charge of everything, this kid that was sold into slavery. And that's the same one that had the coat of many colors. 
okay? His brothers were jealous. And I don't know the rest of the story. There's more to it, I'm sure. Okay, so that's enough of that. Where was I? Okay, the father of Joseph, that he should perish not. Wherefore, the remnant of the house of Joseph shall be built upon the, this land, and it shall be a land of their inheritance, and they shall build up a holy city unto the Lord, like unto the Jerusalem of old. And they shall no more be confounded until the end come when the earth shall pass away. And there shall be a new heaven and a new earth, and they shall be like unto the old, save the old have passed away, and all things have become new. And then cometh the new Jerusalem. And blessed are they who dwell therein, for it is they whose garments are white through the blood of the Lamb. Excuse me. And they are... And they are they who are numbered among the remnant of the seed of Joseph, who were of the house of Israel. And then also cometh the Jerusalem of old, and the inhabitants thereof, blessed are they, for they have been washed in the blood of the Lamb. And they are they who were scattered and gathered in from the four quarters of the earth and from the north countries and are partakers of the fulfilling of the covenant which God made with their father Abraham. And when these things come, bringeth to pass the scripture which saith, There are they who were first, who shall be last. And there are they who were last who shall be first. I've always wondered about that. Okay. And I was about to write more, but I am forbidden. But great and marvelous were the prophecies of Ether. But they esteemed him as naught and cast him out. And he hid himself in the cavity of a rock by day. And by night he went forth, viewing the things which should come upon the people. And as he dwelt in the cavity of a rock, he made the remainder of this record, viewing the destructions which came upon the people by night. And it came to pass that in that same year in which he was cast out from among the people, there began to be a great war among the people. For there were many who rose up, who were mighty men, and sought to destroy Coriantumr by their secret plans of wickedness, of which hath been spoken. And now Coriantumr, having studied himself in all the arts of war and all the cunning of the world, wherefore he gave battle unto them who sought to destroy him. But he repented not, neither his faith. Let's see. Okay, let's stop. Okay, I'm going to go back and start 16 again. I think I got my boss. My head got lost. <clears throat> okay, so, and, and we're talking about Coriantumr, and he is the leader, like the king. I think they said the king in all the land. Okay, so, and now Coriantumr, having studied himself in all the arts of war and all the cunning of the world, wherefore he gave battle unto them who sought to destroy him. Okay, verse 17. Be he repented not. Oh, but, excuse me, I lost some letters there. But he repented not, 
neither his fair sons nor daughters, neither the fair sons and daughters of Kohor, neither the fair sons and daughters of Korahor, and in fine there were none of the fair sons and daughters upon the face of the whole earth who repented of their sins. Wherefore it came to pass that in the first year that Ether dwelt in the cavity of a rock, there were many people who were slain by the sword of those secret combinations fighting against Coriantumr, that they might obtain the kingdom. And it came to pass that the sons of Coriantumr fought much and bled much and in the second year, the word of the Lord came to Ether that he should go and prophesy unto Coriantumr that if he would repent and all his household, the Lord would give unto him his kingdom and spare the people. Otherwise, he should be destroyed and all his household and all his household save it were himself and he should only live to see the fulfilling of the prophecies which had been spoken concerning another people receiving the land for their inheritance and coriantumr should receive a burial by them and every soul should be destroyed save it were coriantumr and it came to pass that Coriantumr repented not, neither his household, neither the people, and, and the wars ceased not, and they sought to kill Ether, but he fled from before them and hid again in the cavity of a rock, of this rock, of the rock, okay? And it came to pass that there arose up, shared, and he also gave battle and it came to pass that there arose up shared comma and he also gave battle unto coriantumr comma and he did beat him insomuch that in the third year he did bring him into captivity And the sons of Coriantumr in the fourth year did beat Shared, maybe that's a person's name, <clears throat> and did obtain the kingdom again unto their father. I bet that is a person's name, but it's, it's pronounced or written like it's shared, like I shared something with you. Okay, now there began to be a war upon all the face of the land every man with his band fighting for that which he desired. And there were robbers, and in fine, all manner of wickedness upon all the face of the land. And it came to pass that Coriantumr was exceedingly angry with Shared, and he went against him with his armies to battle. And they did meet in great anger, and they did meet in the valley of Gilgal, and the battle became exceedingly sore. And it came to pass that Shared fought against him for the space of three days. And it came to pass that Coriantumr beat him and did pursue him until he came to the plains of Heshlon, and, and it came to pass that Shared gave him battle again upon the plains, and behold, he did beat Coriantumr and drove him back again to the valley of Gilgal, and Coriantumr gave Shared battle again in the valley of Gilgal, in which he beat Shared and slew him. And Shared wounded Coriantumr in his thigh <clears throat> that 
that he did not go to battle again for the space of two years, in which time all the people upon the face of the land were shedding blood, and there was none to restrain them. Okay, so that's the end of 13. So everybody's fighting against everybody. That's craziness. And we don't want that to happen, guys. You know? They had diff different weapons, but they, they fought to the death. Bad. All right, so I'm just going to stop right there and call that good since I spoke in the beginning. This is Ether 13, chapter 13. And that's if you have a paperback book or a hardcover book, whatever, if you have the book, then it's in the back of the book, okay? Towards the back. Because there's other books in there. But I still think if you get that app on your phone or your device, it'll read it to you and that would probably be the best because they know how to pronounce the words. They don't got to stumble over it and they should read it the way it's meant to be read. It does make a difference, people. So, I don't always do the best and sometimes I just get totally lost and then I wonder about things, you know. <clears throat> you know, you know. Anyway, you guys have a great one. I know my head's down there. I gotta do something better. I just like rocking in the chair. Let's see what I was talking about. I had my head up there like that. And it looked like my hair was sticking up. <laughs> so I might have to do something different. Make myself a background and quit rocking. You guys take care, okay? Talk to you later.